Welcome, Yom Venu, and welcome back to Hope is Manu with Light. Today we're looking at the Voltaic Coil. This one's another infinite product, so it leads to its own particular set of issues. We'll start with the low cost solution of an arm and a track. And so the process is relatively straightforward. We build a piece. We put it into position, and then we build the next piece. The trick, though, is that it alternates the salt and the fire. So you can't just put a glyph up here and be good to go. Because you have to alternate with... But anytime you try to attach things, it always ends up in the same place. So anywhere you put it where it salts it as it goes you're going to have a problem. So you leave the glyph out of the way of the thing that you're making. And so with the one arm, we're able to shift it around in all of the directions we need to. So long as we leave these here, we're able to shift it around to all of the various places and you don't have to worry about anything. And so it's this big long sword type thing that swashes its buckles all the way down the line. And eventually you've got yourself a product. Uh, the real difficulty with this is that zigzag with the leads causes trouble when you're trying to bond it because a lot of directions you try to move it, it uh, ends up bonding the wrong thing. And so nice cheap 50G solution beneath top percentile. The only way you're gonna make this any uh, cheaper than that is if you were able to make this without the track. Oh boy, does that seem insane to try to accomplish. Trying to build this thing without the track, given you need to, you know, put the fire on each side of the thing. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. If you did make it happen, however, feel free to share it down in the comments, over on Twitter or on Discord or all three of them. All three of them are good too. So that's nice and cheap. Then it gets a little sketchy when you try to make it small. So my first attempt, I started on the left and pushed it to the right and then went, wait a minute, what would happen if we tried it the other way around? Instead of pushing it from the left to the right, using this right here, as a useful space instead of a hindrance. Might save a little bit of space. It doesn't really in the end, at least not in this particular solution. But it, it was an idea. It was worth fleshing out. It was worth trying to build it on this side to see what you can accomplish with just the one binder because that's probably going to be the key to making a small solution for this, is having just one binder. And the trouble with having the one binder over here is that it would need to be here, and that leaves this open. And it sometimes causes a bit of trouble. I was thinking, well, if we put it over here, well, then it's not really wasting any space. It still kinda is, though. But this one's backwards, and it does accept the solution. Once it gets all the way down here, it gets all six at once. You see it's not counting up because you need to have one, and then two, and then three. So this won't actually count anything until it gets all the way to the end. But it's got that 62 area. It's not gaining any more than this. But you can see that you've got several spaces that just go to waste. And so you're feeling like, eh, it can be better. It could be better. It could be better. And so we try to do better and we come up with an idea for having the binder this way instead of that way. And so we can have it nice and nestled in here. And instead of building um, 
this sort of thing here with the alternating fires and salts, we think a little outside the box and instead build this sort of thing. with just the fires and just the salt, such that we can bind it going in this direction. But unfortunately, that means we're going to accrue an extra bit of wasted space out here at the end. But it started me down a path. And you can see it's 64 area because it, it pushes too far. So instead, of having it loop, we actually have it run every single instruction for the entire thing. Why? Well, because instead of doing the full loop over and over and over until the end, once it gets close to the end, it breaks from the loop and just finishes the product. Well, let's go this far. Let's see where we get to. As you can see, there are tons of instructions. Thankfully, you can copy and paste, and with shift and the scroll wheel, it it takes less time than you'd expect. Let's speed to here. Okay, so here we're pretty close to the end. Let's go to about here. Okay. And so here we are at pretty much the end. And we've used this space right here, which we don't want to use that eventually. But for now, since we are following the pattern from the previous solution, we use it. And then instead of pushing it further, we only build these last two pieces. Move them into place, grab the solution, snap, and done. Now you can see, well, there's a fairly straightforward way of removing that one last area. It's by cheating. <laughs> We're a cheater. And so instead of building this full thing, we just build this little bit at the end. And then we build this part. Now, you might have noticed on the previous one, and you certainly are going to notice on this one, now, there's a problem with this whole plan. It doesn't loop. Since we fabricated just the end piece on the previous one, and sw since we just fabricate this end piece on this one, um, yeah, if you try to let it run forever, it's gonna crash, or it's gonna build the wrong thing. Which I think is worse. Because if you leave it here, when it tries to build the next thing, it just goes a little bit crazy. But this one, if you just let it run, will build exactly what is asked for. And so doesn't use this wasted hex up top. But unfortunately, only builds exactly what's asked for, but doesn't make an actual good infinite product and is an abuse of the game mechanics. And thus, I don't feel it's really a worthwhile solution. I wanted to be able to make one that looped properly that got this job done. But alas, I was not able to. So if you've got one that's 59 that is super legit, I'm sure everyone's going to want to see. But unfortunately, this one, it's not super legit. Well, let's see. Maybe it works. Where does it crash? Show us. Where does it crash? There. We don't attach it to the previous thing. There's no way to attach it because we would need a binder in this direction. Well, why don't we use a binder in that direction? Well, if we bind it in this direction, uh, we'll need this size thing on the left here. And that takes up space that we don't have to give. 
So it's unfortunate, but I don't see a way around it at the moment. And then, as always, we go to speed at the end. Now, you'll notice I have Roadrunner, Runner Road, and Roadrunner Twist. Well, I started with Roadrunner. Because what it does is it pushes things along, pushes things along, pushes things along, runs its way down the road. And gets the job done pretty darn quick. It's fine. Then we move on to Runner Road. Which more or less does the same thing. Well, what's the difference? Well, it started with the other direction. Why? Because this was made back when you had to fill something in this last piece. Right here. Since that changed, this one is now worse than the first one. I think it was more or less the same previously. Now it's significantly worse. And so when you've got something that pushes down the line like this, one of the easiest ways to just get it going faster is instead of having it walk from here to the end, once you have it bound, you twist it onto the exit. And so we just took our previous thing and we rotated it such that once it gets to the end, it can twist it into the bin. That's pretty darn quick. 51 is better than the 54 that is the top percentile. But you'll notice that... Uh, let's see. That was the last lead. So that... So one lead, two lead, three lead, four goes one, two, three, four. And every time I count to four in this game, I'm like, really? Really is four the best we can do? And so we need to analyze this shape and see what, what can we do better? So this shape here, well, first off, the lead is probably going to be our bottleneck because, well, look at it. <laughs> it's in a very strange configuration. The other ones are fairly easy with just one bond each. It's not too problematic to attach those quickly and easily. But the lead, that's not so easy. This lead, it has them in a straight line. Done. You can't do that quickly. This one, it's got three of them, two of them adjacent. Done, can't be done quickly. This one, same thing, can't be done quickly. This one on the other hand, this one's bugging me because this you can do. You can get an angle like that fast. So I'm thinking if we build it backwards, we might be able to do it faster. How do we do that? Let's take a look. Let's let's see if we can let's see if we can take that idea and make it into a thing. So we're gonna make a thing. So we need this. Okay. So we're gonna twist it into the exit. Almost definitely. There's no way we're not twisting it in. So where from? Um if the red is on a length three arm, it'll be from down here. If the red is on a length two arm, it'll be from here. Um, let's try it with fire on a length two arm. So we'll need an arm here. Okay. And we'll build the other bit up here. We'll figure out how to attach the other part later. Uh, so we'll need the lead. Where is the lead going to go? Probably here. Possibly here. Let's try to save space. So we're going to need to be able to swing the lead up here. That's going to be the long and the short. Grab, left, reset. We're going to need another one over here. 
inevitably grab right reset because you need to pull these every two frames. Uh, that's the wrong one. Like this. Okay. So that's a start. Then we're going to need to be able to attach something to this to pull it out of the way. Uh, first one is fire and salt. Salt is slow, so we'll do fire. Uh, so we'll need a fire over here that can quickly get onto this. And possibly slowly get onto this. And not get in the way. Hmm. So do we go here and swing it down? If we try to swing it down, it'll hit it if it's here. So we probably put it here and swing it over. Okay. Um, similar thing here. We're going to need to be able to swing it up and through. It's probably good. Let's make sure 4 can do it without crashing. Brilliant. Uh, then it's going to need to be able to pull away. Perfect. Then three will have need of a salter. Hmm. So where do we put the salter that it won't be in the way? Because we're probably pulling the fire from here. Um, we don't have to really shift it much once everything's good. So we'll start it off here and see what that gets us. Do we want to mirror this side? I don't know. So three will grab plus left and minus mm, there's probably going to be a thing here eventually yeah it doesn't seem good uh, let's put it here mm, again probably going to run into things And then it hits. Hmm. Well, let's do this and hope for the best. Okay, now how do we bind this to the next piece? It will need to come this way. So we need to shift it to the left. Yeah, we need to shift it to the left. Which means we need to drop number four. Okay, and we repeat these guys. Uh, we also needed to grab this and salt it. Can number four get back into position in time? Uh, nope. So we need another arm up here.
which will probably start over here. It will shift into place. Uh, let's see. We don't need to grab those super often. Okay, so... Grab. Hmm. So herein lies the problem. How do we get it there? Salted. Possibly like this. We don't need to move it just yet. Uh, problem. Now we need to pull it up again. So four needs to keep going. Uh, five needs to not drop it, but actually keep carrying it. So three does need to drop it. Brilliant. Uh, four needs to move two and rotate back. Ah, uh, it's too far. So what if, hmm, so four, What if instead this was like that? Five does move here. It grabs it and pulls it up here. Rotates it and moves it back. Nope, it's in the way. Therein is always our problem. How do we get it to where it's going without colliding with all the things in the way? If we put it here, can five do something? I don't think it's got time. Oh, it's totally got time. Okay, but the problem is having it here. That's no good. Uh, but if we put it here, it can do a waggle the other way. Okay, four, stop. Being so anxious. Okay, so four can rotate back when it gets there, and then that should arrive on time. Okay, four is on time for the next cycle. Brilliant. Now we need to do something over here. OK, 
Can we get three back in time? So three plus, rotate, minus, minus, drop, plus, rotate. Uh, no. Yes? Oh, but it's supposed to be resetting by now. So we're probably going to need another arm to do what needs to be done. And then we figure out how to reset properly. That's uh, minus. Uh, when was that that... When did that need to happen? Right there. Who's grabbing it? They are grabbing it. Who is grabbing it? Not one. Not three. Not four. Five didn't let go. Oh, five's not going to be able to reset in time. But this is on the right track. We, we're moving towards the right solution. We're just not quite there. Because right now we need to move this out of the way, but also be starting the next phase. Because that's a good first thing. But I'm not sure it's what we actually need. Because now we're out of position for the next thing. So perhaps we need a longer arm for this. Okay, so what happens if three grabs it, shifts, and rotates? Okay, so that's going to be a problem there. Can't really have it pull further that way. If we pull it here? Maybe? But here we are again, the length two arm. What if we have this be a length three arm? And we instead pull it up. Um, hmm. Now we're gonna have a whole other set of problems. Um, I'd really like to just pull it straight away or pull it this way, but this is now in the way. Can we use shorter arms? Like that. Where three starts and then leads to six. Uh, right. No, we don't want three to start. We want six to start. Or six to be back there, because three can just move it minus uh, plus. Uh, 
Um... Oh, but then it needs to pull it up. Right. Or back? Back. Six. Stop doing whatever it is you're doing. So if we have six, follow it around. Oh, right. Everything's in the way. It's never going to have time. So it really feels like we should be able to do something with this. But my time is running short. What can we do? So I like what we're doing over here. I don't like this right here. So we probably shouldn't do that. Okay, what if we went back to what we were doing before? And found some other way of getting this to there. also seems unlikely. Grab. Uh, could be okay. So we just move along with three while we have to. Soon. Oh, right. You need to move it twice. But three isn't in position to start over. And we're back where we were. How do we get those to stay in position? I think problem is how early three has to grab that. So we might be in a bad placement. And we'll be better served by starting with a short arm and ending with a long one. So let's delete six for now. We'll make three do its job. At least figure out what three's job is. Okay, so three then needs to pull it away. So at that point, three is done. Needs to get back to where it belongs.
Now, we need to have this skip over that and get into position. Which is a huge problem because to do that, it needs to be where three is. So what if we grab it? Where do we have an opening? I think the biggest problem is that it's taking too long to get it done. And so we don't have an opening in which to throw this in there. And the biggest, I think, problem of this whole thing... Oh, I see. What we can do. I see a thing we can do. We'll need another arm, though. Okay. So we're going to cheat. We're going to have this bring in the last one at the last possible moment. And that's going to be its only job. That is way too late. Or way too early. There we go. So now, three needs to not have let go of it yet. Uh, what do you do? It's a minus right there, I think. Okay. And then that is going to go to the... L oh, but it's not going to be able to... Well, it might be able to reattach it. Because if we move this over, and it turns to the left, where do we need to attach it? Here. We need to get this lead back here. Hmm. Rotate down. Oh, well, we might be able to manage it. Nope. I think that's too late. Um, four and five, I think think are in position to repeat. Uh, five starts a little later. Nope. It's it's a tick too late. Ah, oh, we're so close. I think we can turn this into a working solution, but I'm not going to be able to do it in this episode. This has already gone way too long, but you can see my process for getting towards a solution. I have faith that this one can work. It's just not quite there yet. Might post the uh, solution in my Discord once I figured it out. But thank you for joining me for this episode with the Voltaic Coil. I'll show you one that actually works. As we say our goodbyes, thank you for being here, and I will see you in the next episode of Opus Monium with Light.